Well, this is a pretty bad news. What's on deck? Let's see what's going on in the world of cards. We'll start off with Kickstarter. There's a lot going on. So let's check it out. First of all, Wolfram V2. Playing cards. Collection set, whatever the hell it is. 2019 SS, it says. Uh, by Artisan Playing Cards, which is actually TCC, I'm fairly certain. Because they're the ones promoting it on Instagram. This is the first product, the first project for Artisan Playing Cards. It's 49% funded, 14 days to go. Not a very long campaign, 15 days. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Again, why is your profile private? What are you hiding? Like, I don't understand why people do that. Private profile. It's annoying. A lot of people seem to do it. Anyways, let's look at these. The Ruse in Noir, which is red and black. First playing card published in Bizarre Art Magazine. It's now a Luxie Art Set. $51 Canadian for a set. No, no thank you. Um, and like I said, this is V2. The previous version was put on Kickstarter by TCC like a year ago, and it was promptly cancelled because they had so many, they had a variety of different projects on uh, Kickstarter under different accounts at the same time, and also it appeared that the deck had been produced in uh, and was available already in Asia. So now here, here we are with a second edition, which apparently is all about science, look at that chemistry period table, whatever you call it now, I don't remember, it's been a long time. <laughs> Periodic table, that's what it is. That's all about science, as Thomas Edison. The symbol of Wolfram is W, which is used in metallurgy. The scenery, construction, transportation, electronics, chemical, plate, industry, textile, military, aerospace, and air fields. Really? Try to think of where W is used in construction. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, there's the producer, Cliff Park. Another cardist. Another reason he wants to be on America's Got Talent, I'm sure. <laughs> And revolutionary card case, if you say so. Certificate with individual number. That's what you get. It's an interesting tough case. An interesting case. A box. A deck. This is the first edition Wolfram point card, by the way. It's just white. It's kind of like a modified NOC. That's exactly 100% what it is. What it was. 600 bucks for a brick. Who would pay that much for a brick? Are you out of your flipping mind? Anyone who pays that much money for six decks for a brick needs to give their head a shake. <laughs> Just say no. And so far, everyone has said no. In fact, there's only five bricks available. <laughs> uh, so far, the most people have gotten is three decks, which also includes the first edition set, apparently. Very few backers. This is interesting. Three backers, and then ten backers, 94 bucks, Canadian. Three backers at 187 bucks, Canadian. And two at 280 dollars, Canadian. And yet, somehow, they have $2,600, I guess that kind of adds up. Seems like a small goal. Let's just continue looking at images and whatnot, I'm not seeing. Too much exciting here with this one. It seems very, very expensive. 1111 decks. Are you kidding me? And that's your goal? And you got all this special stuff? I don't know. That adds up to me. The tuck case, as you can see, Rue Zenoir. Very boring, in my opinion. And you see a joker in here, which just has that symbol on it that's on the front of the tuck case. Um. Yeah, there's your tuck case. Nothing overly exciting. Looks like a matte finish. Nothing on one side. Stuff on the back that we saw elsewhere about the atomic number and the name, etc., etc., the symbol. And then the back of the card is that. That's it. That's your back of the card. It's fine. Black border. I think it also has, yes, it has black borders on the faces, so at least it's uh, not a full bleed deck, if you will. It's got black blues on both sides. It's a black border with a red back and these little 
scratches down the middle. It looks like a rip-off NOC deck, basically, with down the middle. Really? Nothing too exciting. The Aces look like they're rip-offs from the, uh, the Vogue Cardistry decks. To say. And the Faces as well. The Faces with the black border is also a rip-off of the Vogue Cardistry decks. And the Court Cards are completely standard. This one has a reveal for an 8 inside the pit. That's kind of cool. I don't know why they're showing us a blurry image of the Court Cards. Of the Faces. Like, just show us the damn image. Why is it blurry? Why is it like that. And the case, I mean, is nice. But it seems ridiculously expensive if you just want a deck of cards and nothing too exciting. Being printed by a uh, Taiwan card company. Yay. Let's move on. Next, we got Lollipop playing cards. Lollipop, Lollipop, Lolly, Lollipop. <laughs> but Flamenco playing cards, it's 24% funded, 29 days to go. As far as that other one is concerned, is it going to fund? There's a chance it funds, but I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of collectors like myself, are not going to want to spend that kind of money on that kind of artwork. It's just not that exciting. It's a nice case, that's about it. Uh, this one, again, may or may not fund, so lots of time to go. The bat design is mirror image, it's colorful. With pinks and blues. Purples, if you will. Um, as a border, what do they want for a deck? Twelve dollars on the early bird. There's an ultraviolet tuck case, apparently. At least that's what it looks like to me. UV tuck. Printed by Carter Munde. 310 GSM Black Horse Stock B9 Super Lux Finis. Not very often you see the stock mentioned, so that's cool. Um, it, it looks alright. Kind of cool. And I do like the colorful faces. However, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, it's interesting uh, what they've done with the clubs and all the pips. They're all colorful and Candy Lisses, I guess. <laughs> uh, the court cards, they're just lollipops, not very exciting. I do like the aces and the pips. It's kind of a cool deck, it's one that I might look at later on. I do like the colors, and each suit does have its own color scheme with the pips, so it's identifiable, it's usable. These are the pips, they all kind of got the same colors, but they're all different. Um... I don't have too much negative to say about it. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of court cards. Why I, I, I would have preferred a, a court card figure with a lollipop, you know. Uh, as opposed to just a lollipop, it seems like it's lackluster. But the faces are nice, the backs are kind of colorful and fun. This looks like it was robbed from that Joker deck. <laughs> I'm just saying, that Joker. Also, chocolate has nothing to do with a lollipop, so deals out of place and the other one of course looks like jelly beans flamenco of course have put out other decks food related uh they were okay like the watermelon deck comes to mind they had a watermelon the burger citrus and now they got the lollipop this one to me is kind of the coolest one i guess of the buns i still don't know if i'll get it never got the other ones but it's interesting at the very least and next we've got Cardamonian, Das Blumer, the Verdamten, playing cards, by Andreas Joska, or Joska. 27% for 27 days to go, that's not necessarily a good sign. And, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to make 660, 666% evil. That makes me want to pledge like crazy for it, really. <laughs> um... 13 euros for one deck, a bit pricey. As you can see the court cards, there's a lot going on. Not really a fan of that. Also, the jacks in this deck are use kind of European or French uh, indexes. 
You got a B for the Zacks and a D for the Queens. Not really my thing. I do kind of like that each suit has its own color scheme. Although you can see the hearts and diamonds are similar in color. One's red, one's orange. And then spades and clubs. One's black, one's brown. Still not really a big fan. Each one's got its own unique theme as well. Spades family is warmongering, warmongers. The hearts is the bloodthirsty or vampires, I guess. The diamonds are uh, greed, and the psychopaths. And the clubs are religious fanatics. Okay. And then the number cards get more of the same. Interesting. It appears the clubs have been replaced with X's for some reason. Um, not a huge fan of that. The faces are okay. I'm not really a big fan of the pips or anything. The indexes, it's not really doing it for me. And the back design is a joker. By the way, apparently you can have your face as a joker. They're not even showing us the back design. Is this... Like, you see the back design in here, it's just a star, very one way, if that is the back design. But they have failed to source the back design in any, any of these images. And I'm just not a fan of that. Moving on, also I didn't see anything that indicated who was printing it. Next we have Ear of the Pig, Lunar Zodiac Playing Cards, 1 of 12. By Nomad's Playing Cards, it is funded, 32 days to go. Funded very well so far. And I'm not sure I'm 100% a fan of this. It's not a bad looking deck of cards. Um, my problem is that it's two decks of cards. And they're doing apparently 12 different sets times two. That's 24 decks. That's 30 bucks for each deck. For, for two decks. Times 12. That's a hell of a lot of money, not to factor in, you know, shipping costs and everything. I don't know if I want to pledge for such a massive set. Yeah, I did it with the, you can say I sort of did it with the Planet series from Vanda. But I like that one, and it wasn't 24 decks. It was 9. <laughs> Big difference. Ruder and Zodiac series of decks. I feel like they've tried these ones before as well. Nice tuck cases, I will give them that. There's 12 sets of decks. Standard and limited editions, and there is a difference between each one, not just the tuck case, like the Vanda ones. <laughs> uh, nice tuck cases, though. There you see, limited edition tuck case. Obviously, it's gonna have foils and stuff. And this, you can see all the different ones on the side of the box. That reminds me of the Vanda Planet series, so kind of copying a little bit, in my opinion. Uh, it's a standard edition, red colors, and you can see the different colors again, kind of boring from that Van the Planet series. I keep going back to that one, because it feels like they're ripping that one off just a little bit. Limited and standard editions, a limited edition all have the same colors, standard, all different colors. they got these images along the side that kind of fit together. Really feels like they're ripping them off. Metallic inks, uh, whatever Star Dream and Serial Metallic Papers are. That's what they're using for the Tuckies. Never heard of that before. Star Dream and Serial Metallic Papers. That's interesting. They're pearlescent card stocks in Italy, apparently. Um, it's the back side of the limited edition. It's got a pig on it. <laughs> Yay. Because it's a pig deck, of course. And these are uh, other ones for the other ones. The dragons and whatnot. And then you go to the faces of the limited edition. A lot of detail in there, it's nice, but it's kind of hard to make out what's going on inside the pit. I assume that's a pig, but it's kind of hard to make out what it is. Lunar Zodiac, you're the pig, that's fine. The other races are nice, nice pips. Court cards, yee. Uh, they're interesting, they're nice and custom, they remind me of their previous stack they did, which was Messenger. 
Something Messenger is a very long name. There is a lot going on in there, a lot of colors, a lot of detail. And then it's, there's... What is this? It says, Best Compatibility, Lucky Numbers 254, Lucky Flower Daisy. I guess it's identifying stuff related to that uh, zodiac symbol. Unlucky Direction, Southeast. Can you prove it? <laughs> Worst compatibility with this zodiac symbol. And they got the different zodiac symbols all on the court cards. Which means each deck is going to have basically the same chord cards, just different information. And the number cards, pretty nice custom pips. I like the background detail. There may be a little bit too much going on. Just a little bit. Not sure how I feel about these kind of gray pips on the dark background. Uh, but they're nice and they, they might actually work alright. Chord cards, i uh, sorry, the jokers are interesting. Apparently there's four jokers in each deck. And then you get to the standard edition. Same thing, uh, the back design. Whoops, I went way, way too far. This one's got a reddish back design. Or pink, I guess. <laughs> uh, but the standard one is gold. Why is it different? Why make it different? And then the, the faces, again, on the standard ones, same pips and everything. But they've got this gold background as opposed to what the other one had, which is a dark background. Same artwork on the Jokers and everything. Um, and I just like this because this is the type of thing that makes me want to buy both decks because the faces are different to some, to some extent. But at the same time, they're not. It's a different background. It's a different color on the back design. But the faces are the same, which is really cheap in my opinion. They could have changed up the faces, and to buy 24 decks with the same freaking faces, and just a different color and logo on the backs, eh, I don't know if I'm down with that. That's a lot of money. It's going to be printed by, oh, never mind, complete pass. It's going to be printed by NPCC, which is the same as their previous deck, Messenger 1, and I have to pass. Not a tremendous fan of more or it's nothing wrong with them in general. It's just overall the project. It's going to be very similar from deck to deck. I don't know if they're going to do all 12 in a row. Look at that. You have the rat. You have the ox. I don't know if they're going to do all 12 during this whole year or if it's going to be every year a different one. I don't know how this series is going to progress. And you can see the jokers are different throughout the series. They have the court cards, the kings of all the series. So there is a difference in the kings from all the different decks. But is that it? Because that's all the science. The kings and the tokers. Queens and the jacks, I don't see. Anyways, I don't know. I just I have to pass on that. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get on with it. Next we have Wild Deserve Pink Boar playing cards, speaking of pigs. By Bill Davis Magic. 63% funded, 26 days to go. Decent chance this one finds. I know. Wow, I've been talking for a while. I apologize. This video is going to be long today. <laughs> it's like the third project we're looking at, and we're almost 20 minutes in. I do apologize. Ah, uh, it's the year of the pig, so they've made this one pink boar, and he's admitted it's not the only version potentially. The ace of spades very plain. It just has a BD for Bill Davis Magic. Tuck ace. It's a boar. It's a pig. It's not very exciting. It's pink. <laughs> why pink? I don't know why pink, but apparently it is. 15 bucks US for this deck. No, thank you. You got something in your face, dude. <laughs> um, and be fulfilled by Gallus, printed by USB-C. Good stuff. Um, you can see the rest of the tuckers. Nothing too exciting. Really simple, plain tuckers. The back features the boar. Faces are completely standard. So basically, this guy is trying to create his own version of the Fontaine deck. And somehow, he's gotten permission from uh, Daniel Madison to have his face on the deck as well. Jokers is a pig's tail. 
and a pig on the other one, it's a spade pip in the corner, instead of a J. Ah. And then there's information on the wild pig reserve. And yes, he does plan to release some more other versions. He's already working on another one. And this is the pig reserve. I don't know if he's planning to donate funds from this project to the pig reserve. However, that would be illegal. Uh, it would be against Kickstarter terms. Um, apparently, Daniel Snyder of Black Rose Point Cards has designed. Also, Nick Nicholas Molines has done some rendering. Lorenzo has offered some information and guidance on pricing. And, yeah, I see the Madison logo on here for some reason. Special thanks to him for endorsing the deck. So he's endorsing the deck. Why wouldn't he? It looks like a Madison wannabe. <laughs> uh, no, it's just not going to happen at that price point. I'd rather get a Fontaine. Next, we got Thronus's point guard by Chris Hague. Hayes. I recall seeing that name before. 48% funded, 26 days to go. Will the pink board deck fund? I can almost guarantee you it will. Will this one fund? There's a decent chance. Um, so have a look at this. It says it's his first grade, but I'm fairly confident I've seen that name before. $8,000 gold. 10 bucks US per deck. Apparently there's three different decks, and they're fully marked. With suit, value, color, Aronson's stack number, mnemonica stack number, and a subtle one-way feature. Neat. That's not bad. He's got three different versions. Classic edition. And a couple other editions. I don't know what they are. Oh, the Ideation edition. What the hell is Ideation? What the hell is that? That's not even a word. But apparently it has proven methods for creativity. And then the collector's idea is in addition, because why not? <laughs> um Ted Box for a classic market edition, fifteen for the idea is in addition, and twenty bucks for the collector's edition. And this is what you get on the faces. There's a a sex there's a, a you know a cut from the back design of the there's a piece of the back design on the faces, and then there's all sorts of ideas. And stuff. Really. That's what you get. That's the faces. Okay. Uh, the back design isn't bad. The faces, not really feeling it. That being said, if you're looking for something a little more classic, there is this classic edition, which also has a daft double back where I see there without the logo on it. More standard jokers and cards. Kind of a simple ace of spades. And standard, completely standard faces for magic purposes. Collector's Edition is going to have a tuck by Clove Street Press. Clove Street Press, sorry, did I say Clove? <laughs> Clove Street Press, my apologies. I can't speak. And I don't know what else. And Tuscan Seals, basically the same. Yeah, I'm not really feeling this one. Nice poker chips, I suppose. Reboot. So he's selling somebody's trick on here as well, apparently. It'll be printed by Carter Moon Day. Yeah, I'm not really feeling this one. Next we have Magic and Microcosmos. Ice Crystal Point Cards by... Lix one, I believe it is. 79% funded, 54 days to go. With that much time, I don't know why they need so much time. Or they're going to regret it later on. Ah, because the project will be funded and they won't be able to do anything for another month and a half. But it looks like it's going to fund. With that much time, it better fund. Otherwise, it's pretty horrible. Uh, first time creator. Keep that in mind. Nine bucks US on the early bird for one deck. Interesting case, given that much. 
The faces all feature basically snowflakes, crystals. The indexes are on the wrong fucking side, just saying. That's not where you want the index. At least that's not where I want an index. It's good for left-handed people. That's about it. <laughs> and the back design is really simple. Also, it's a one-way back design. Just look at these, well, flowers, crystals, whatever you want to call them. How they are, and it's definitely one way. I don't know if that's intentional, because it's a very blatant one way. Or if it was accidental. This just looks really... This little one here and this bottom on the on the edge, you see a couple little you know petals, whatever you want to call them. It looks really off putting. <laughs> Tuck case looks okay, kinda of simple. Score 20, huh? As a game? Game pla, not gameplay, game pla. <laughs> Just saying. So it's some kind of a game that goes with it. I do like the number cards. And actually I see they have the indexes on the right side here. I think. So thank goodness. So I was, I apologize for lashing out at them before. I don't know if this is a reverse image or what it was. But they had the indexes on the wrong side. Also, I don't know what the hell this is. With the Jack, Queen, King, and ace on there? Is that supposed to be a gaff? A joker? I don't know. In fact, I haven't seen any images of jokers. The number cards aren't bad. Not a huge fan of court cards. Actually, yeah, they're just crystals. Apparently there's player's edition and a collector's edition. Collector's edition, edition comes in that special case. Fantastic. Ice Crystal Solitaire Program. Interesting. Um, they talk about quality. They say they're choosing a professional poker factory. However, they have not identified what factory that is. So, again, by beware. Moving on. Again, not my cup of tea. Next, we have one that I can get behind. <laughs> the Jet Setter Point Guards Premier Edition and Jet Setter Green by Paul Arcchio. It is funded 24 days to go. There's your deck of the week, I would say. I mean, yeah. the only problem is kind of cool, though. But this one, uh, at least I can get behind it and have. Um, and this one might be the last one that they do in the Premier Edition. I'm not 100% sure. It's going to be put by extra point cards at the previous ones. And it throws back to the original Jet Setter deck, which was green in color. And they've done red, blue, and black now in this Premier Edition. Now we get green. 11 bucks a deck. US, so that's a good price, I would say. Nice, simple bat design. Nicely done. Nice tuck case, as always. I like the color. Here's the Ace of Spades. Your code cards are modified in color a bit. Nice jokers. I mean, if you like the previous ones, you'll like this one. I, you know, I have nothing negative to say about this one. There's also gaff cards, belly strippers, wet strippers, and negative strippers, all by Slim Cards in Canada. You can check out their website. Just Google it, and um, you can get all sorts of cool gaff decks that he even custom makes on his website. So, if you're looking for anything, I would recommend checking him out. Uh, next we have the Poker Deck of the Drowning World by Nicholas Kahn. I actually don't know if this is an actual Poker Deck or not. Let's find out. Let's have a look. Interesting. It's funded. Ten bucks for a deck. That's an interesting tough case. Poker Deck of the Drowning World, Panamic. Panoramic parable total in 52 scenes. That's interesting. Um, there is numbers on each card, and there's a K here for the king. Uh, 
There's fine art edition, lava flow, and flood point edition. So three different editions. Um, at each thing, the back design actually makes one image, so it's not very. It, it's an interesting deck of cards. It says it's a poker deck, but it does not have poker indexes. It's a very interesting. <laughs> Uh, back design and 100% not on a cup of tea. We won't be talking about it again because it's not that great. Next, we got A. Boy, I think it is. Newfoundland point cards. I'm not even 100% sure what they mean by the BY. Could be boy, could be something else. By Alana Loves. 24% funded, 18 days to go. It's all about the new fees, as they're known. The Newfoundland people. Which is, uh, it's Newfoundland, not Newfoundland. Or Newfoundland. Whatever you want to pronounce it, but. Uh, uh, it's a Canadian province, in case you're not familiar with it. It's designed to be as unique as the province they come from. So he is a new fee, as we call him. Twenty bucks Canadian for one deck. <laughs> new. Uh, I'm sorry. Three hundred GSM professional card stock. Durable center, plastic coated, it doesn't actually specify who's pointing them. And there's no images or anything, except for this, which shows you that there's different Newfoundland themed things on each face. And I think that's the back design. Inspired by, obviously, the Scots and the Scottish, <laughs> uh, the kilts. But that's it. Really, you need to show more. I couldn't, you know, endorse that one. Then we got Contour Crimson Red point cards from Jason Wen. Again, another one of these. How many times is he gonna do different colors and everything? It is funded though, four days to go. And there you see, eh, some people might not like it. I think it's being printed by MPC, I'm not 100% sure. I would assume it's an okay back design compared to a lot of these other decks. It's okay, it's not bad. I can't believe that it said it's not bad. But the faces, again, they're custom. They're not horrible. The court cards have some unnecessary blank space that could have a pip in there, and they're just completely standard. They look like they were copied and pasted. Um, it's okay. I'm not a huge fan of it, or him, so I'm not going to pledge for it. Next we have the Trade Bicycle Point Card by Mark Allender. It's 5% funded, 24 days ago. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's an okay theme, it's a unique theme. I don't mind the court cards. I'm mean, not sure why they use the blue colors for the hearts and diamonds. Um, celebrating folks that build stuff. That's cool. To work in construction, so I kind of appreciate it. 11 bucks on the early bird. Only 16 people so far out of 25 have pledged for an early bird. Somehow, one person pledged a $13 regular price. I don't know what they're thinking. <laughs> um, the artwork isn't, you know, bad. It's pretty cool. And each one has a different person listed there. The back design, a bunch of tools, and what looks like a tally old circle back idea. It's okay, it's not really too exciting. That's it, they're not showing us a whole lot uh, more, they're not showing us jokers. They didn't show us the ace of spades, or any additional cards. In the bat design, I feel like it could be better, I just don't think this is going to happen unfortunately. Um, moving on, Geometric Doodles, because that's what we need on playing cards, by Florian Smid. 14% funded, 43 days to go, way too long of a project, in my honest opinion. Uh, wow. It uh, seems like a pretty big goal. 8,000 CHF, whatever that is. Ah, Swiss money. Um, yeah, not really feeling this one. 
40 bucks Canadian for one deck? Are you kidding me? No, that's not going to fund. It's an interesting idea. It, a lot of it looks like it was just drawn by a kid, I would say. Uh, I'm not a fan of those faces, number cards, the index pips aren't that great in my opinion. The court cards are interesting, but they're not going to do it for me. Here you see the faces, okay, maybe, yeah, I mean, the, the, there's a lot of details in there. Maybe I was wrong to say it was, it was like it was drawn by a kid, but still, it's not my cup of tea, and I don't think too many people are even interested in it. Especially at that price point. If it was a reasonable price point, it might fund. $40 Canadian for one deck, though. What is that? 35 bucks US? Ain't gonna happen. Court cards? At least they're not repeating court cards. Sort of. <laughs> um, but, uh, they're unique. I'll give them that much. They're different. They're not bad, but not my cup of tea. And in the back, what is this? There's also a limited edition in black. All the colors reversed or inverted. They also don't show us the back design, which is a solid. <clears throat> you gotta show us the back design, people. You can't just not show us the back design. Surfboard playing cards by Riffle Shuffle Creative Space. I believe I mentioned that one last week. I know I did it. Or did I? I don't recall. It is funded though, 22 days to go. We'll look at it. Why not? Even if I did sell it. I don't recall if I did. It's uh, very similar to the uh, skateboard deck they did previously. Ten bucks each, not a bad price. Same color, by the way, as the skateboard deck, except it's all about surfing. Um, you see the waves and the surfboard on the back design. It's cool. Uh, and there's also a marked edition, apparently, or it is marked, apparently, because I don't see two different editions available. And here you see, actually I did, I do recall showing this, but apparently there's markings in, somebody mentioned it to me, I don't recall where it was. Ah, I'm seeing something with the tires, that's for sure. But I don't know what that identifies. <laughs> but definitely there's something to do with the tires and not so what else. Uh, oh, here we go, there's actually some information I missed. I'm supposed to be able to look at this and identify the value based on that. I guess the kind of sun is all the same one here, so it's hard to tell. Nice custom court cards. Like I said, similar to the skateboard deck. Pretty cool. Uh, I'll definitely look to get it later on. Fun jokers. It's a fun deck. There's also a Gilded Edition exclusive to Kickstarter, only 200. Not really a fan. Printed by USB-C or B crust stock, if it's in finish. And it should be available you know, later on. And then I don't know if I mentioned this one. The Four Elements of Thinking playing cards, training cards, whatever, by Benjamin Chang. Funded somehow. Oh, because it has a very low goal. $100 goal, 12 days to go, and it's not exciting in my opinion. It does have standard point card in because they're on the wrong freaking side, and just one, and there's just a whole bunch of stuff on there. It's not the type of deck that I would want to get. $10 goal? That was the goal? Are you fucking kidding me? What kind of a goal is that? That, I would not endorse supporting that in any way. I don't know. You know, a whole lot about what this deck is about. Uh, there's your back design, apparently. Apparently, it's been produced already. They're ready to sip. And I just, I don't think it's good. Moving on. Time last playing cards by B2B Continent. 32% funded. 20, uh, 20 days to go. Don't think it's going to happen. The Crop Circle card by X-Zone, 71% funded, 49 days to go. Good chance it funds because it has so much time left, but it was not that exciting. The Quality and Justice point cards by Passion point cards, 60% funded, 8 days to go. 
it may make it, it may just make it there at the end, but it's looking a little bit iffy, unfortunately. Black Magic's playing cards like Chris Magic, 33% funded, 48 days to go. Again, what is with these extremely long projects? Either your project funds or it doesn't. Having a project that's so long does not guarantee it's going to fund. Zeg's playing cards, and personally, I would love it if Kickstarter had some kind of a limit on how long your project could be because there's no reason for it to be so excessively long two months long give me a break anyways moving on zeg's point guard by oscar reynolds i'll be back I... so as i was saying zeg's point guard by oscar reynolds 30 percent funny 23 days to go i not sure if it's gonna find it this way i don't think so paper wave point guard by lorenzo cobo funded 12 17 days to go all these Planets by Jason Chang, 21% funded, 32 days to go. Not sure it's going to happen. The Odyssey Nova edition by Sergio. Sergio Roca is well funded, 12 days to go. Bicycle Manakai Nico Point Cards by Bookable Bicycle is well funded, 17 days to go. I don't know why they need a different account again. Testament Point Cards by Ben Green. 35% funded, 14 days to go. It's looking a little bit iffy. It uh, needs a uh, miracle, <laughs> if you want to find it this way, it looks like. Although it still may make it, and I hope it does. The Unprecedented Deck by Playing Politics, Playing Card Company, please change your name, is funded, 14 days to go. Halloween Royals by Scott Smith is funded, 13 days to go. I apologize if I'm going a little bit faster, but this has been... A very long video as it is. Ascension Point Cards by Steve Minty, which is worth checking out, is funded 22 days to go. Sandman Point Cards by Perpetual Arts and Design Company is 66% funded 27 days to go. Good chance it funds. Tulip Point Cards by Diamond Point Cards is funded 12 days to go. I don't know if they've hit. They have unlocked the orange deck, so that answers that question. <laughs> um, Insecta by Emmy Smith. Is funded 10 days to go. Iconic point card by Nickel Samuelson is 30% funded 8 days to go. Not gonna happen at this rate. Sears Aspectu by Sears Point Cards is funded 6 days to go. Swords One Point Cards by Alexander Petty is funded 6 days to go. Wonderland and Looking Glass Decks by Swab Decks funded 5 days to go. Diamondback Point Cards by Dmitry Lebedev. 45% funded, 3 days to go, it's not going to happen. It's just a result of this way, way too many projects on Kickstarter, as you can see right now. And also, it's just being kind of a standard deck. Buccaneers Playing Cards by Cracking Cards, 69% funded, 9 days to go. Still a chance it funds, it's pretty nice, although it may be a victim of too many projects on Kickstarter. Implicit V2 by Nathan Dharma is 93% funded, 14 days to go, just a matter of time. Literary Classics by Card Savant, 55% funded, 9 hours to go, unless it has some last minute um, funding, it's not going to make it. Take Masters by Agitcom is funded, 17 days to go. Um, moving on, Strain Wars, Class Deck, Relaunch, number 12 or whatever, by Jason Shepard, 41% funded, 20 days to go, I really hope it doesn't fund. Uh, Choco Gioco. By Sweetie King, the 15% funded 48 days to go again. I think a victim of too many decks on Kickstarter. I'm not going to make it. America's Greatest Card Deck by Santiago Nudman. Nudman. 0% funded 25 days to go. You put that guy's face as your thumbnail, it's never going to happen. It's insane. <laughs> um, Impressions, Rising Sun, and Azora Edition by Make Point Cards. NPC is well funded, 70 hours to go. If you're interested, make sure you get in on that now because they seem harder to find after the fact outside of maybe eBay. Most of the card shops don't seem to sell them. Game of Spade by Aaron Parker is funded 50 hours to go. That's why. And that is that for Kickstarter, thank God. Uh, hang on, I will see if there's anything else to talk about. So yes, there's quite a bit to talk about. So let's get on into it. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to check United Cardists. There, I'm not sure what else it would be there to talk about, but let me see. First of all, Art of Players recently decks these standards playing cards, which seems to be inspired by uh, 
Buddhist royalty and Buddhist currency. It's by Kevin Fentwell Studio, who's done other decks for them. It's kind of weird that they're calling this deck standard, but it's a premium deck of cards. Kind of an, I don't know, oxymoron. Put it by USBC. Um, there's also a bespoke box set with inlaid gilded accents and finished with a high gloss piano black. Metal lid, with intricate sculptural details, robust magnetic locking mechanism, and six compartments lined with leather. Four, six different decks. Right now, there's three different decks available, sort of. There's this black one, it's red and black, the red one, and this is the box. There's also a gold one that you can get just with the box, whether it's available later on, I'm not sure. 15 bucks each, the box, 195 bucks. Yikes, this is the black deck, I believe, and then the red deck. Nice, you know, Ace of Spades. Court cards look like, you know, some that we've seen on other Art of Play in 311 decks. Nothing, I mean, they're nice. I was going to say they're nothing too exciting. They're nice, but they seem like more of the same that we've seen already. I do like the number of cards. And, you know, I'm definitely in on the two main ones. Unfortunately, the other one is, well, it's, it's on a, it's a too expensive, basically. <laughs> way, way too expensive. If I can get that one later on, you see the bat design on the gold one. It's white and gold. Same faces, though. If I can get that one later on, you know, I might get it. If not, screw it. Nice top cases. Uh, 15 bucks each, though. Gemini has a couple new decks as well. Aside from the Skid Row, they got the Superfly Butterfingers, which might be a copyright infringement on the name Butterfinger. I'm not sure if they're allowed to use that one. Just saying. Uh, but I've never been a fan of these Superfly decks all about cardistry. And yes, they're born from the Supreme brand, Superfly. And there you see the Aces. Court cards are standard and recolored. Some modifications to the faces. It's okay. Not really my cup of tea. This other one though, Goblin, playing cards is interesting again very cardistry friendly back design it is mirror imaged and in the faces are very interesting colors custom pips and well the standard recolored court cards they kind of look ugly <laughs> with all those colors but they're okay it's interesting and uh it's one that i might pick up later on Moving on, the USB-C has a couple of new releases. First of all, a bicycle tactical field, which I may or may not have mentioned last week, in jungle green and desert brown. Although really it looks like a, a brown deck and a black back deck, as opposed to a green back deck. And they're alright, I do like that. I'm not so right to call it green if the back is actually black. You know, it's kind of what you expect from USB-C standard decks. Uh, decent price, four box seats, not bad. Definitely down that. They've had previous tactical field decks. The original were black and green. Same tuck cases released exclusively for like military members, but you can still find them online. And then there was one they released like a year ago, which was basically the same tuck case. It was just black or was it green? I don't really remember. And now they've released these two, which are technically green, and a new color in brown, with new tough cases with camouflage on them, and I'm in on, in on that. They also have another new deck that just released the other day. A little bit upset because I had to place two different orders on the website because they didn't release these at the same time, but it's the Bicycle Frontline Leaders Collectors Edition. 52 businesses and charities launched by the military community in response to 9-11, and each card has you know, something different on it. It's interesting back design one way, but it's nice. Um, they don't have much. Uh, you can see there's a different thing on each card. They don't sell too many of them, though. But, you know, you'll see that when I, I do the review, <laughs> obviously. I noticed a couple of new things on the Fat Out Magic as well. Uh, first of all, it seems like the Paisley and French blue and ruby red will be 
available soon, coming soon. Also, Bicycle Supreme Line. Let's have a look at this. The Rider Max for Magic, uh, the Distant Cardist. The Distant Cut, Rust Stop, and Free Special Cards. I don't know what they are, but there's a video you can check out. I won't do that um, in this video, but you can definitely check them out. It's just a new line of bicycle point cards, apparently. Those seals. There are uh, the three specially printed cards are a double backer, a blank face for regular back, and a falling pips card. Not very too exciting or that we haven't seen before. Affordable, supposedly. Uh, printed by USB C, of course. Basically, it's just a new USB C card from Magicians and Cardists. Sounds alright. Also, I noticed a couple more. Fortunately, they did not open. The first one I've mentioned before, but we haven't really seen. I noticed it last week. It's the Cosmic Deck by JL Magic. And they're not really showing us too much. Just 52 normal cards. It says 300 decks available. Elastic, Colossi, Elastic glossy coating, whatever that means. Fifth edition of the Cosmic Deck. I didn't even know there was four other editions of the Cosmic Deck. Good grief, are you kidding me? When was there five editions? Or four other editions? I've never seen them before. Um, so I don't know if I'll end up getting that. And then we have the Mechanic Deck by JL. Newsflash, by the way, JL Magic. And apparently this is the third edition Mechanic Deck. Mechanic Industries already produced the Mechanic deck, and now you're creating your own version? Seems kind of like you're ripping off their name. Um, apparently, is that what it's produced by? The Pasteboard Courier? Or the, no, Pasteboard Conjurer. Or they're involved with that. I don't know who produced this. Apparently, it's the third edition. Same finish, 300 decks. I don't know if I'll end up getting it again, because it just... I don't know who's produced it, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them since it's so limited. But if I don't mention it, uh, let's go on to Murphy's. Not too much new on playing card decks this week. Murphy's Magic, where are you? <laughs> Come on. And they see they have the Goblin playing cards. Returning Japanese edition deck from uh, Kickstarter. I was never a huge fan of the Copeg 310 Alpha playing cards, which is purely a cardistry deck with two different backs. Ah, uh, the Ant Strokes Unicorns deck. Other things that aren't actually playing cards. Um, nothing else. Nothing really new this week. And let's just have a quick look at this on United Cardists. In case I'm missing anything. Scad playing cards. Oh yes, the Bicycle Dragon Ball Z. I just caught it the other day. It was available on amiami.com. Uh, Link is in the description of the unboxing video, I do believe. Should be anyways. And, oh yes. Oh yes, oh yes. We'll look at a couple of minor things here. First of all, what is Scad? Okay, never mind. It's Savannah College of Art and Design. <laughs> um, doesn't even have any images. Don't know if you can get it. Is this one a bicycle Jinja or Haku Hinken? It's just a rider back in purple, modified colors. It'll probably be available on eBay at some point in time. Seems similar to these decks, obviously. Um, and another one from Japan. Is this the Bicycle Alice in Wonderland exhibition deck, which I hope will be available as well? I imagine it's just going to be standard court cards. Yes, it is recolored. Nothing too exciting. I do like the Jokers, and it's a nice color. And that is that, I do believe. Comment, rate, subscribe. I know it's a really long video, unfortunately, with a lot to talk about. Yes, there's just way too many decks on Kickstarter. Anyways, I think that is it. I can't think of anything else from any other 
card websites that have come out recently, or that will be coming out. So that is that. See you next time. And comment, subscribe. Like it.